Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about a rather large radio from Baofeng, the UV25, and we'll get started right after this. The items that come in the box, well, generally you get a user's manual, but mine didn't come with one. But that's okay, because you can download one from the Baofeng website. You get the USB A to C charging cable and wall adapter, a bell clip, a wired earpiece and mic, not one, but two antennas, a 5200 milliamp hour battery, and the radio itself. You can download the owner's manual from the Baofeng website. It's not too bad of a manual. They give you the usual stuff. If you ever look through a Baofeng manual, it's pretty much the same thing. Gives you some FCC compliance things, some important tips. Talks about charging the battery. And this battery, because it is 5200 milliamp hour using a USB-A to C, it takes a while. It is not a fast charge. Talks about storing the battery. And the battery has to be screwed down, which I'll show you later on. Gives you a description of the radio, the icons for the screen, tells you what the LED indicators mean, basic operations, gives you the weather channels, you pick which one is closest to you, different scanning modes, channel scanning, talks about the Vox, it has this new feature, this stopwatch. DTMF information, your power on message, little troubleshooting guide. And then here in Appendix B at the back, you can go through each of the menu items and it'll explain what they are and what the different settings are. And there are 46, 47 including the zero. Gives you some specifications like transmit frequency range 140, 144 to 148 megahertz and 420 to 450 megahertz for the American version, Canadian, slightly different. It will receive your commercialized FM stations, you receive some AM to 220, a wide swath of the 2 meter band and 70 centimeter band. At the time of filming this video, the Baofeng website is showing that these radios are going for $56.99. You can also buy a two-piece where you get both the radios, two sets of each antenna, programming cable, for $119.99. To me, that doesn't make much sense because if you buy two of these separately, it's $6 cheaper. On Amazon, they're going for $49.99 for one radio, and there is a 5% coupon that you can apply. Now let's talk about some of the features here. 999 channels, 5200 milliamp hour battery, multi-band Type-C charging, a frequency copy. They're saying the screen is 1.77 inches. Shows you how to do. talk about the uh, one key frequency copy. They also have DTMF. You can do dual watch, dual reception, dual the, with the dual band capabilities. A lot of it's the usual stuff you find in any other Baofeng. Okay, we'll do a quick look around the radio, starting with the left side. On the top here, you have the SK1 button, push to talk, SK2, SK3. SK1 button, you push that, you get your weather channels. Push it again to turn it off. SK2, the first one below the push to talk, Press that once, you get the FM commercial radios. Push it again to turn off. Press and hold, and that gives you a monitor. So you can listen in for some weaker signals. SK3, the bottom one, push that, you get the flashlight. Push it again, you get strobe. Push again to turn off. Push and hold, you get the little siren. On the top, you have your antenna mount the flashlight itself. They have this little bracket to help secure the power and volume knob here. 
On the right side is where you'd hook up any accessories like a speaker mic, programming cables, etc. On the front you have your menu button. Shows the menu down here at the bottom. To get out of it you hit the red button to exit. Up and down arrows. You have your usual nine key keypad or ten key. You hold the green button, that'll get you to VFO and back to memory. On the back here you have the battery. It has your belt clip screws. The charging area for USB-C charging. And if you notice down here at the bottom of the battery, it is screwed into the radio. If you're familiar with any kind of Baofengs, this menu is going to be pretty much exactly the same. Start by getting, entering it by hitting the green button, then using your up and down arrows to go through the menu. And like I said, it's pretty much the same as every other Baofeng. The real only difference I saw in here that caught my eye was the stopwatch. I'm sure there's a couple other things. Here it is, you hit the on button, your green button, it blinks, and then you hit it again, it brings you to here. To start the stopwatch, you hit the green button and it starts. You can't do a lap timer with it, because if you hit the green, it'll pause, but then it starts over again. And then to escape out of the stopwatch, you just hit the red button. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna show you how to input a frequency for a repeater and a simplex one. We'll start with the simplex one. We're gonna use the national calling frequency, 146520. I've already got that input and we're already in VFO. Now to switch back and forth from VFO to memory, you're gonna press and hold the green button. See now it says 999. Press and hold again, puts us right back into VFO. Now we wanna make sure a few things are all taken care of. So we're gonna go into the menu Go to menu item two, and we're gonna check the power, make sure it's on high. Then we're gonna to go to menu item 12, and we're gonna make sure that the transmit CTCSS is off. After that, we'll go to 28, make sure that our shift is off. Then we'll go to 29, and make sure that we don't have anything in the offset. And then we're gonna save it, so we'll go to 30, Press on here and that allows you to change the channel and we're gonna to go to channel two. Then hit the, when you find the channel you wanna save, just hit the green button and it's saved. Exit back out, press and hold, shifts to memory and you can see we're at two and we're at 146520. Now we'll do a repeater real quick. Again, go back to VFO, press and hold the green button Enter the frequency you need, 145220. Then you're going to go into the menu, go to menu item 2. Let's make sure your power is on high or middle or low, whichever you prefer. Once that's done, go to menu item number 12. And we're going to check our CTCSS. We want 103.5. You can press and hold and it'll go through the numbers a lot quicker. And we went the wrong way. And we want 103.5. Once you find the one you want, hit the green button, and that locks it in. Now we're going to go to 28, and we're going to set up our shift. In this case, we want a negative or minus. Go to 29. And we're going to put in the offset. Since this is 2 meters, we want zero, 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 six. And you just put in two more zeros and you're all set. Hit the green button to lock it in. And then we're gonna to go to 30. And we're gonna lock that in. We're gonna to go to 15. Hit the green button to lock it in. Exit out of the menu. And you can see we have a little 
minus up there and the H for high power and we're in 15. Okay, now let's see if we can't make a contact. WJ6F testing. Well, it doesn't appear that there's anyone there, but we did hear the repeater come back, so we know we've got it programmed properly. Okay, we're going to be using a Surecom meter, and the number you're going to want to pay attention to is right here where these zeros are. Where these dashes are, that's just the SWR. This is where the power is going to be. We're going to start with 2 meters on low power, and then we're going to switch to 70 centimeter. Now what the website says is that it should be 11 watts on high, 8 watts on medium, and 5 watts on low. 2 meter low shows about 3.5 watts. Let's go to medium. And we're at 6.9. Neither one of those are where they should be but they're not too far off. Now let's go to high power. High power two meter. And we're at 12 watts. It did drop down, but we're still above 11. Okay, now let's try 440, 70 centimeter. 70 centimeter low. And we're at 3.2 watts. Let's try medium. And we're at 5.7. And now let's try high. And we're at 9.5, 9.4. We got 12 watts out of two meters on high, which is the only one that met and or exceeded the advertised power rating. I wrote to Baofeng and asked him why they made a radio so large. And the reasons they told me, and this is their quotes, one is the button design. The larger size allows for bigger, more accessible buttons, which are easier to operate in low visibility. Well, I can understand that. It does make it easier, especially if you're in an environment where gloves are a necessity. And then they said for durability, the overall metal frame enhances the radio's durability, making it more resistant to drops and impacts the battery capacity, they also want a larger battery. The radio supports a high power output, necessitating a larger battery to ensure operational time. Their third reason was for heat dissipation. The increased size also helps with better heat dissipation, ensuring the radio remains cool during extended use. So those are the three reasons they gave me for why such a large radio. Now with my aging eyeballs, the larger buttons definitely help, as does a larger screen. I don't need my Costco cheaters to read what's on the screen or buttons. You know, there are some things that I do like about this radio. I do like the fact that the buttons are larger, the screen is larger, and as I said before, when your eyes start failing like mine have, it's nice to have larger buttons that you can see. Larger buttons also help if you're in an environment that requires gloves. If you're familiar at all with any other kind of Baofeng, you will have no problem going through the menu on this and programming any kind of frequency straight from the front end. What I don't like about it is the weight, but considering the size of the battery, it was bound to happen, and the size of the overall radio as well. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos. And again, thanks for watching.